Oh, COT, Jill, uh, we're back on live. Uh, YouTube wanted a disclaimer that the clip was educational and I didn't get a chance to do it. So um, we'll just uh, continue on um, with the knowledge of what you saw of uh, Spencer Wells and uh, Fierce Truth Seeker. Uh, you can tell us briefly what you thought of Spencer Wells. Uh, fill us in again a little bit about African Town. Um, we were speaking on uh, people are saying that there's no such thing as Africa. Uh, there is no such thing as slave ships. And uh, we were speaking on um, at least 400,000 were recorded in Turtle Island, over millions across the um, uh, uh, different countries. So uh, what can you tell us on your uh, understanding and acceptance of Spencer Wells? Do you accept uh, what he says? Uh, is he partially right? Uh, I know your family uh, can't trace any African um, heritage. Um, it's reported we have uh, at least 246 or 264 great grandparents, and a lot of us don't know what's in our blood. But um, I know that Professor Gates was caught lying on camera that even Oprah uh, made up that she was Zulu and his friend in the um, DNA department was uh, helping him make up things. And, you know, uh, do you feel that way about Spencer Wells? Is his knowledge limited? And I also had um, a database for people to research on the African slave trade uh, as well. They can research the name of vessels, um, the trip ID and so on and so forth for anyone that caught the show that uh, we just did that was interrupted. Can you tell me how you feel about uh, Spencer Wells? Okay, well, Spencer Wells, I actually bought his book years ago when it first came out, the book entitled The Journey of Man, A Genetic Odyssey. Mm -mm. And I also saw the documentary when it came out back in the days. And I actually referenced that book in my book as well and i wouldn't say that he's lying he's just conventional you know he's using the conventional wisdom however when i bought that book i think that was mm -mm. maybe the early 2000s or late 90s or something like that i don't remember right off my head mm -hmm. however a lot of that stuff now is kind of dated and obsolete because the anthropologist is now finding more evidence of an into Africa theory than anything else. And When Spencer Wells did that documentary, he went around to various nations and interviewed various people from various tribes and indigenous tribes and things of that nature. And even went to the Navajo as well. And he presented his theories to them. The Navajo was like, oh, okay. They didn't really debated or anything they no. kind of co-sign on it a little bit or kind of acquiesce with it more so and 
they went to the Australian Aborigines. He went to them. And the Australian Aborigines looked at him like he was crazy. They said, <laughs> they tried to tell him they came from Africa. They said, well, we don't know anything about that. You know, we, we, we don't have any of that in our folklore or any of our traditional stories. We don't, we don't subscribe to that at all. You know, we came from, we didn't come from there. And he even said in his book no. that Lucy was not the only Lucy in the garden, just the luckiest. So in other words, it's the evidence that they found. There were other others there as well. So left to waiting to be discovered. Okay, so this was just based on the evidence that they had at the time. So now there's lots of evidence to the contrary, especially if you don't follow the conventional narrative and you look at other evidence outside of conventional wisdom like, for instance, they found footprints in Bolivia that was like 15 million years old. Okay, human footprints. And that just debunks everything that goes with the out of Africa theory. Also, they found human remains that were millions of years old as well. And it was, let me see, uh, there was an article in for the Forbidden Archaeology magazine that I reference in my book, okay? And it talks about how the there was a metal vase that was found and also reported in Scientific American 1852. They reported a beautiful uh, metal metal vase that was like 600 million years old. Now. Primates don't create beautiful metal vases. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and they also found a human, mm -mm. it was a human shoe print. Not footprint, but shoe print. A shoe print. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a human shoe print. Okay. And it was dated to be 500 million years old. Now, primates don't wear shoes. <laughs> <laughs> no homo sapien sapien, huh? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. And... They found also, um, uh -uh. they found an anatomically modern human skeleton, okay, that was like 90 feet below the surface of the ground in Illinois. And uh -uh. it was dated to be 300 million years old. Okay, and they also found a gold chain. <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell the audience again uh, what years? Okay, this was in 1891 that the gold chain was found. And <laughs> it was found in a piece of coal and dated about 300 million years old. 
Now, primates, monkeys, and apes <laughs> don't create gold chains and rock gold chains. Unless know? they're from the planet of the apes, right? Unless it's from the <laughs> planet of the apes. that on a, a <laughs> monkey pox, too. <laughs> exactly. And the planet of the apes, at the end of the series, you saw that they were supposed to have gone to the other end of the galaxy, right? right. And yeah. at the yeah. end, they were right here. You know, they probably just went beyond the poles, you know. <laughs> another subject for another time. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so, you know, if you go with the conventional wisdom, then, you know, that's going to be said to be impossible. However, mm -mm. we know that conventional wisdom is just what's put out there for the masses. OK, anything that doesn't fit the narrative that they are trying to push in the mainstream they don't give credence to it and they discredit it okay that doesn't mean that it's not real it just means that it goes against what the establishment's religion is well what do you feel about the narrative that no one came from africa <laughs> what is um, that about that no one came from Africa. That everyone is from here. Um. Well, directly. Well, we do know that there were Mali and Moors who came here, and you see evidence of that in the architecture found in the pueblos. Okay, which is exactly like the cliff dwellings in Mali, West Africa. Okay, so people say there's no evidence of Mansa Musa and the Mali and Moors and things of that nature. However, if you look at the cliff dwellings in the Pueblos, it's exactly like those found in Mali, mm -hmm. West Africa, exactly down to the very minute details. Okay. Well, there's a, a, a horror movie on Netflix uh, called What Lies Below. And uh, almost in uh, five or 10 minutes within the, the film, uh, the, the creature uh, that looks human is um, presenting his girlfriend's daughter with a object I, I told you about. And mm. he said it comes from the Navajo, but basically uh, it's a symbol of the Moors. Oh, the now magic. they can look that up. Yes, they can right, look right. that up on Netflix, What Lies Below. Yeah, I talk about that oh, in my book. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that but it's coming from a white man making a movie. You understand? Mm -hmm. So what do they know? What have they studied? Mm -hmm. They know. You know, they always end up telling the truth on something, you yeah. know? Yeah, they do. They do. They uh, it's like they they love you and hate you at the same time. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know? And that's a more symbol, the crescent uh, that they say in the movie traces back to the Moors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very true. You Very know. True. So no I'm I'm hoping anyone that was on a few minutes ago uh, with Spencer Wells, there's a lot that you can find on him uh, and his theory. And uh, you can also, Henry uh, Gates, uh, 
You can look up the transatlantic slave trade data and find out information on ships uh, that were supposedly bringing people over. Um, you can do some research on that. And um, I, want, I know Truth has a, a lot to do. He told me he has some other projects to do tonight. We can do a part two. Uh, I, I will get around the Spencer Well <laughs> video uh, situation. Uh, I usually put a disclaimer on uh, my videos that I don't own them. Um, but we don't necessarily need um, his video. Yeah, uh, you can you can clip. Uh, I can tell you how to do that. All you have to do is they'll send you an email of what was copyright copywritten material. Yeah, and they will allow you to clip that part, and all you got to do is follow the prompts. Oh, okay. And it'll clip the part that but we, we don't clip. necessarily need it, but it was nice to show it, and um, the audience did get to see it briefly. Uh, we lost some viewers because of the interruption. Uh, I guess they don't see that it's back on, but they'll see this video. Uh, and you stated that in your family, you cannot trace any African lineage, even though you've been to Africa, you did your research. And um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, there's a rumor on one of our lines. And for years, I was taking that and running with it. And only to find out when I asked mm -mm. more mm -mm. detailed questions about it the it, it was just that a rumor and it was not anything that could be traced with genealogy and it was just uh just a hunch because when we, when I asked, well, where did that particular ancestor come from? Can they provide mm -hmm. evidence of a ship where they came off of, or uh, you know, any particulars about where? Well, not where in Africa, but particulars about is coming from Africa and this, that, and the other. When I asked those okay. questions, then they weren't able to provide that. You know, what we do know is that that particular ancestor came from Venezuela, but nothing, no concrete evidence of Africa other than you know just similarities of a surname now that's not to say that there is no african ancestry there yeah okay i'm not one of those who just say you know oh you know oh, you know there's absolutely no african in my heritage because you know we genealogy is an ongoing process and it branches out very quickly. And we don't know hundreds, thousands of years ago who may have intermixed with who over a thousand period time frame and things of that nature. So <laughs> I don't just, you know, use the absolutes. I just say that I don't have the evidence, the genealogical evidence of that. And I leave it at that, you know, but what I do have genealogical evidence is my ancestry here on American soil. Okay. Um, I was just requested, uh, yes, please do a part two. They want us to come back for part two. And when we come back, uh, I would hope that you could present some of your different 
phenotypes that all you know uh people call them um african they have mm-hmm. uh those um negroid features or uh what they call negroid features mm-hmm. <laughs> i like to say that you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> you know that's not true <laughs> yeah so yeah. um well, you find that- phenotypes you know what phenotypes well i you know like as you know i lived in africa so i know that you do find similar phenotypes yeah that you find over here uh that's a certainty and I've when I was there, I saw people who look who could pass for twins of people that I know here in the states. I mean, twins, you know, yes. exactly. And I was like, wow, you know. So you, know, you find, you know, even here, you find various phenotypes among our people. You know, right, There's right, one set phenotype here we our phenotypes range you know from aquiline features to typical what they would call west african features or whatever you know so you know there is a connection you know in terms of how should i say it you know, you had, again, you had Mali and Moors who came over and mixed in with tribes here and even, you know, set up tribes here. So, you know, we don't know. You know, we can't use the absolutes. Right, exactly. We well, um, can you discuss briefly your theory on um, the African slave ships and their construction and uh, the illustrations of how they said Africans were placed on the ships? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, some of when you look at some of the descriptions of the slave trips and their constructions and things of that nature. You know, again, I don't say that there were no slave ships that came over because I do in my book, I do give a list of slave ships that did come over. And most of them that I have come across had on an average of like 20 people 30 people. Yeah, yeah, that's what I have too. Yeah, on an average ship. Uh, A small amount. Right. So when they say, you know, these people were packed like sardines and some of that stuff with the talk about the construction, some of that stuff is just ridiculous. And you know, it's just fantasy and fiction. You know, they yeah, know like, they like sardines about. packed on top of each other, like yeah. sardines. <laughs> no exactly. room to move. <laughs> yeah. Defecation on yourself. Mm-hmm. And, they, you know, talking about, they even have where they talk about in some illustrations where they say, yeah, there was one packed in a cabinet, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all up in a cabinet. <laughs> you know, <like> this. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that's straight up fiction come on you know you taking a long voyage you know packed up and curled up in a cabinet come on <laughs> yeah and some people say they weren't slave ships they were cargo ships you know but some of them were all cargo of people you know like yeah. you said 20 30 people or whatever but not <laughs> We don't really believe they were packed on top of each other like sardines. And right. if they were, how many people were guarding them? You know, uh, just kind of unbelievable. Yeah. And again, you know, there's, you know, we don't have to debate whether or not there was, you know, slave trade and this, that, and the other. Well, first of all, with slavery, the 
what they call slaves. You're talking about in, in terms of the, what they call the slave trade, they were indentured servants. Okay. They were indentured servants. And I lost him for a few minutes. He'll be back. Okay, he's having problems on um, his end. Uh, yes, JP and some of the so-called Africans they were bringing over here were not actually from the continent, but they could get more money by claiming they were. That's a very interesting um, fact. So um, he's having difficulties on his end and I'm going to see if I can schedule Fierce Truth Seeker to um, come back and we can discuss this. Uh, my concerns uh, was a denial of no African slaves coming here. Uh, if any of my audience uh, can interject on anything that we said, um, please hold it for next time. I'll try to arrange another summary uh this week today is what wednesday uh we'll try again um during the week or possibly the weekend and uh until then uh, we'll be addressing spencer wells lewis gates even oprah winfrey um claiming she was zulu and um, I'll give you more statistics on the African slave trade, uh, names of vessels, uh, the amounts across the continent of people where they were dropped. So until then, this is Fiber Gray Wolf reporting from Native Voices Turtle Island TV. I love you guys. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. Um, We'll be doing um, more on this subject because it's very important. Uh, a lot of controversy across the internet is on um, Aboriginal, Indigenous people. Um, I'm not Aboriginal. I'm Indigenous. I'm not ind Indigenous. I'm Aboriginal. When in reality, they, the words mean the same thing. The first people of, of the land and... Um, a new generation is um, making a whole new history. And we like to, uh, wait a minute, he's in the studio, but I don't see him. Hold on. Okay, guys, he's he's having problems coming back in. So uh, we'll try to pick this up maybe tomorrow. And I'll uh, have your questions ready. Wait a minute, he's saying he hasn't gone anywhere. Can't see you. <laughs> Technology.
Can you guys see him? Anyone, can you see him? Okay, hold on. <laughs> Ta -da! Hey guys, he's back. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, here you find. Yeah, I was there the whole time. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know. That's um their technology. We're doing everything correct. You had a black screen. Um, the people are still holding on um, to hear your great words of knowledge. Okay. Yeah. So now I um I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I hear you now. Okay. Okay. We were speaking of um oh. The Gates guy, Spencer Wells, and Oprah lying and saying that she's Zulu. Uh, the amount of Africans that uh, really came here to Turtle Island, um, the mixtures with the Moors. There's a uh, movie on Netflix called uh, What Lies Below. You can look at it the first few minutes of the video. Uh, he speaks of the Navajo symbol and admits that it's really a Moorish symbol, um, can be traced back to the Moors. It shows you the uh, how long the Moors have been affiliated with tribes here. Uh, and that was a film made by uh, uh, people of the Caucasian persuasion. And um, what do you have to add, Fierce? Yeah, well, as I said before, they are the symbol, the Naja symbol. I talk about that in, in my book. Also, Spencer Wells, for those who just joined in, Spencer Wells had gone among the various nations presenting his theories and his scientific findings about civilization or life, should I say, starting in Africa, blah, blah, blah. And he went all over the world. He even went among the Navajo and you know the Navajo heard what he said, and they kind of acquiesced. The crescent that the Navajo wear—that's mm. originally Moorish. Yes, yeah, Moorish. And the Spencer Wells went among the Australian Aborigines, and the Austra Australian. He presented his theories to the Australian Aborigines, and they said. We don't know anything about that. You know, we don't know anything about coming from Africa. We that's not in any of our stories, any of our folklore. You know, we don't have any tradition saying that we came from Africa. So they they gave pushback on that. So and I if anyone who just joined in, you can look at the earlier parts of this particular interview that you might have missed when we talked about that. I'm not going to go back over that stuff. And also there was, uh, I guess we had a someone in the chat was talking about the uh, some of the so-called Africans they were bringing over 
were not actually from the continent, but they could get more money by claiming they were. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we know about that and the intercontinental uh, slave trade, but we're not talking about that in this discussion. We're talking about those who actually did come via mm -hmm. the uh, transatlantic slave trade. That's what we're talking about in this particular discussion. You'll probably have to go back and look at, I don't know, I think, Firebird, are you going yeah. to follow the YouTube guidelines and edit out the part? that they said was a violation of the copyright um i probably that, they'll, that. They'll air, they will air it if you uh if you click um, yes if you, all you gotta do is is go is look at the email they sent you and you click yes and they'll cut it out for you mm -hmm. they'll cut out the video of spencer wells for you okay well um I'll get around to doing that, but my hands are kind of tied up in other things right now. Mm -hmm. um, if they send me an email, if not, I'll make my own <laughs> video of, of the Spencer Well issue. Uh, yeah, well, I meant so that they could, because we spoke a lot about some of these things in that particular video. This way they can, those who didn't hear the live, they can hear what was spoken of. Well, I tell you what I'll do. Um, people are asking for a part two. So mm -hmm. let's save that again for the part two. Okay. You know, um, uh, because you have, that's you have, some, questions. You have some questions in the chat that I don't know if you want to read those questions. Um. Uh, I, I'll let you read them. I, I just see uh, messages from you right now. Oh, okay. Um, uh, someone is asking, is it true that Africans came in the 1800s? Uh, oh, I see that. Brooklyn yeah. lady. You had some that came in the 1800s. Yes, yes, yes. They did have some that came in the 1800s. You had those who came even before that. Yeah. And um, prior to what, 1817, um, Africa wasn't called Africa. Um, one of the names was Ethiopia. We well, had yeah, different names. Uh, you had, they called it Ethiopia at one time. You also had Akibulan, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So uh, we can discuss that uh, as well. My main issue tonight was the denial that no one came from Africa and a whole new narrative is being made and people are actually believing it. And um, I, I just think it's a little disingenuous um, to do that to... Uh, you oh, know, we had another question on uh, Firebird. Um, go ahead, you go ahead. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm expressing um, my thoughts on being that I know um, many African people and, um, you know, uh, their ancestry. Another, before I forget, another good movie to watch is Daughters of the Dust. Um, that's another good movie to watch. It's about the Gullah Geechee. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I believe what one sister in that movie she gets with a, a Cherokee brother or right. an Indian brother towards the end, or mm -hmm. uh, probably more so in the book, but in the movie that shows uh, the relationship between African and Indian as well. I'm I'm talking about two different con you know places not um indigenous of this land but uh people from africa got with indian people as well you know uh i don't know how the the viewers feel about what i'm saying but i mean it's a reality you know everything well, is not from turtle island directly you know yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, what were you going to say yeah, I saw that movie, Daughters of the Dust, when it came out. Uh, I, I didn't like the fact that they kind of minimized the indigenous aspect, you know, 
and more so they played up the mm -hmm. African uh, aspect. But um, you know, it was a good movie overall. You know, but it deserved a little more. The indigenous aspect it, it deserved a little more attention because the way that they told it, it would make it seem like you know the Gullah Geechee people are mm -mm. an African people who mixed in with the indigenous. And then, you know, when you study the history, you know that, you know, that's not the case. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's a good reference um, mm -hmm. movie to watch, you know? Yeah. yeah. For and references. You have a, a question or is it a comment? from Brooklyn lady. Uh, she says the Indians didn't understand the African language and rarely mixed with them. Uh, that's not true. That's not true. Well, let's take one part of that comment. Mm -mm. So a lot of times you had, uh, you had, uh, let's see, for instance, the story of the story of, um, well, not even a story. If you read in the book, The Only Land They Knew, mm -mm. they tell you that the, when they studied the Nanticoke language, they saw that they had characters that were identical with um, Mandingo. Okay. And also, some people may not have been here for when we went on earlier when I was talking in the interview, but that's why I said Firebird, you may want to re, uh, you know, do that edit. But anyway, I'll go back a little bit. So it's not true that indigenous people didn't mix in with Africans because just by the simple fact that you had maroon societies will illustrate beautifully how that's not the case. Like for instance, the maroons in Jamaica, okay? You have the maroons in Jamaica, some of them are indigenous, some of them are African, okay? Anybody who knows who from New York and used to watch rockers back in the days. That was the reggae show that used to come on. And there used to be a guy who used to come on on rockers who he puts out the, they call him the Bushman, brother uh, Reddy Duckett, also known as brother Rashan Abdul Hakim. Okay. He puts out the Sundown Woodroot Tonic Bitters and that whole sundial product line okay and he is a maroon and he knows his genealogy they still practice their customs and everything and he said that his people were coromanti people from africa and his herbal formulas were passed down from his family okay from generation to generation coming from africa and the bitters that he put out are herbal formulas that his family traditionally preserved. Okay. And you also had maroons in Jamaica who were indigenous. Okay. So that's one example out of many where you had indigenous people mixing in with African. Same thing with Montezuma. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Montezuma said that his grandfathers told him that not all of their people 
came from this land, he said, but had come from where the from 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 where the sun rises in the east. Mm -hmm. Okay. And even when the conquistadors described his attire, they said his attire was exactly like the Moors that they left over in Spain. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the Book of Elders, uh, that uh, the elder women spoke about uh, that our people came from the you can quote you can quote it for me. Well, they didn't say Africa. They they they, they were talking more about Atlantis. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Talk about Atlantis, but uh, I'm particularly dealing with Africa for this particular comment. Um, right. That 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 right there, what you're talking about, Firebird, is another discussion that we could do in a later. Uh, presentation because that can get kind of lengthy, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as you know. <laughs> I know, but I just want to deal with the Africa thing um, to satisfy the questions and comments about Africa um, while we're still on. Well, uh, can I can I say something? Mm -hmm. uh, I watched your show about uh, Marcus Garvey right. and people uh, beating up on him. Um, and accusing him of wanting people to go back to Africa when that wasn't even an issue <laughs> in his time period, exactly. you know? <laughs> exactly, yeah, because because a lot of people are taking modern ideologies and trying to make them retroactive. And right. there was no such thing as an American Aborigine ideology at that time. Right, exactly. Okay, well, this is something that came about later because our people went to sleep. So they right, didn't know anything right. about that. And many of their references were biblical in nature. Okay. And I talked about that in the lecture presentation that I did on Marcus Garvey. Okay. This is around the time of Marcus Garvey and even, you know, um, centuries before Marcus Garvey came with the UNIA, you had the Africa ideology, okay, among our people, you know. So you can't blame Marcus Garvey for something that was like common knowledge of that day. Of okay. that day, a lot of people were talking about Africa being the birthplace of mankind and things of that nature. I'm, I mean, even up to the 60s and 70s, you know, and, and mm -hmm. 80s, mm -hmm. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. Everybody looked at like Africa as the birthplace of humanity. And, you know, you had those who were saying, OK, well, mm -hmm. you know, Africa is the birthplace of humanity and we're quote unquote black people so we're the original people and this that and the other you know and that was the same line of thought that garvey came out of as well as many people before garvey and garvey wasn't even nowhere near the first person to create a back to africa movement he was like the last one yeah. he's just the one who was more recognized for that because he had a movement that was larger than all of the people combined that came before him because of exactly organizer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so. I, I want to thank you for that show. Uh, a lot of the young people need to know and understand. Um, bashing all um, the the original heroes that that fought for melanated people. You know. Yeah, they were doing uh, the best that they could with the limitations of information at that time. You gotta remember, they didn't have internet back then, like how we have now, you know? And a lot of the information that we have now, they didn't have back then. So you can't take your mindset that you have now and, you know, <laughs> apply it to 
back then when you know it, it the, those ideologies didn't exist and then you have to study the history of the movements that were going on at throughout time you know in this country the different movements right and exactly you understand those movements and the chronology that's what i did in my lecture series on garvey and the whole Garvey being an agent and things of that nature, you know, I talked about the the importance of looking at the chronology of the different movements that have uh, come up uh, throughout the time, the throughout the um, time period here in the in in North America. Exactly, exactly, and that's important. I mean. The poor man was getting slandered back in his day, you know, mail mm -hmm. fraud and, you know, whatever they could do to um, to discredit anyone that was trying to um, believe in themselves. And he had a lot of beautiful quotes as well. Um, look up some of a Marcus Garvey quotes, folks, uh, and uh, try to understand him a little bit better, um, you young people. You know, I mean, people even bashing um, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. <laughs> <laughs> Anything. <laughs> we don't need um, the Caucasian persuasion to do it. We're doing it ourselves now, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, even uh, King was talking about uh, uh, back to Africa and stuff like that as well. You know, you know so um, you they didn't have all the knowledge that we all have now. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> what did you say? I said you can't just single out Garvey. If you're going to talk about Garvey, talk about everybody else. You know, I, I, I was just looking on um, something, a TikTok or something today, and they were concentrating on did Martin Luther King do something a good or did he cheat on his wife? I mean, <laughs> it just... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> uh, debate what was more important him doing that or <laughs> cheating on his wife i mean wow <laughs> we really have come far <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, could, I couldn't believe it also um to add some shed some further light on the whole thing about the indians understanding the african language this that and the other also you have to remember that when Columbus came, he had interpreters that spoke various languages from the East, okay? And he had interpreters that spoke Hebrew, that spoke Aramaic, uh, various languages from the East, okay? Now, if they didn't understand those languages here, then why would he have interpreters that spoke languages from the east to hold that he said to hold converse with the kings of the Indies? Right, right. Okay. Also, Meredith Musa Quinn talked about how the ancient indigenous people here spoke the. He said that they spoke the old Coptic language. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the ancient Kim language, Kim meaning mm -hmm. Egypt. Okay, so you know, we have to dig a little bit deeper when we talk about these historical events. You know, you have to do further research, and then you'll, you know, know more about, you know, what is real and what is not. Right, exactly. Exactly. Also, I, oh, and the 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 uh, Garifuna language. Yes. Okay. Garifuna language. You find a lot of words that are similar to words in, in that you find in Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even among the other languages in the Caribbean. Okay, so you know, you just got to dig a little bit deeper, exactly. Could you read what um JP wrote? 
It says, uh, I won't bash anyone, but I will say a lot of our leaders were either agents from the start or were eventually infiltrated. I, I yes, 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 that that is true. You had a lot of a lot of leaders that were compromised, you know, and that you know that's just a fact. You know, well, but it's not it's not all of them. But yeah, a lot, yeah, you did have. Well, well, even with the treaties, a lot of our Native American um, chiefs were either threatened or they sold out, it sold out a lot of Indian you know, sellouts, you know, a lot, a lot. You know, so I, I just think that's across the board, a human nature, you know. Mm -hmm. um, some of them sold out because they, they didn't have a choice. You either help us or we kill you, you know? And others were tempted uh, by uh, finances. You know, mm -hmm. the person that turned um, Geronimo in was one of his uh, close people for, right. you know, and he turned, he portrayed him and, uh, Thought he was going to get gold pieces, and he ended up in uh, jail with Geronimo. Right. <laughs> That's just an example, you know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and they um, they did dirty things. They uh, made the Indian people in, in prison with Geronimo. Um, they gave him little trinkets, and, and made it seem like he was all a part of it, and that was to make his people turn against them, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's your fault. Uh, why are you getting this jacket? Why are you getting uh, to go into town or, or whatever, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that was divide and conquer, you know, oh, so yeah. uh, it's easy to believe uh, infiltration or, or money or persuasion or, you know, um, deceitfulness That's uh, is very easy. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. Been going on. <laughs> that's, that's, that's been going on, you know. That's been going on, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, JP, uh, you're right, you know. He's mm -hmm. saying yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so um, we're going to do a part two or three or whatever. And we'll show uh, Spencer Wells again and, and talk about that if you like, if you want to skip that and go on to something else. But um, I felt the need to do this uh, show tonight because I don't, myself personally, I don't agree with um, no one came from Africa directly or no one came on a boat <laughs> because uh, it had to be overcrowded because it sunk. You know, they could have made a gazillion. They could have had more than one ship and brought 20 people on each each vessel, you know, and that would add up to a thousand person on a trip. <laughs> we don't know exactly everything they did, but um, I do know that people have come from Africa. Um, I might only be for over 395,000, 400,000, but they did come. Oh yeah, you know? and, and I, I, I had already proven that. Uh, yeah, in the first I, 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 part of the lecture. That's why I said if you can, you know, get that put out there because it, some of the questions that people had in the comments uh, is already answered. And like I said, the whole thing with Marcus Garvey, I had proved that Marcus Garvey was innocent uh, in my lecture series, mm -hmm. and um, also, you know. The I talked about how you don't even have to debate whether or not there were Africans who came over here as slaves. You just look at the certain cultures and customs, you know, like I talked about the Melungeons, um, how they that wasn't slavery, but they were escaping persecution. Some of them, you know, I talked about in IT or Haiti. How I talked about how the you look at the practices of Voodoo and you see clearly you have African rights and you have indigenous rights. Same thing um, within Puerto Rico and Cuba 
You know, you look at the dishes that they prepare to eat, the names of the dishes, clearly African. And then the religions like Santeria, Lukumi, you know, Palo, you know, you see Yoruba and you see Congo, you know, uh, even Brazil. And I talked about all of that in the first presentation that got cut off. So, yeah, that's why I say if you could get that. Well, we uh, <laughs> we can carry it on because people want they do want a part two. So okay, we can yeah. pick back. You know what I'm saying? We can. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know uh, if you're free this week any more times, or I know you have some work to be done um, uh, Monday or whenever. We could uh, pick that back up. Uh, uh, probably Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday would probably be better. Huh? I'll be vending on Monday. Okay. Uh, footnote of history. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was said to be Melungeon. Elvis you know. Presley. And who? Elvis Presley. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. Uh, some say even uh, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um, I, it was important for you to host this show um because uh, you're fair-minded you're not one of these people saying uh oh no uh nobody came from africa and, you know that's all a lie a myth <laughs> um you're, you're very fair-minded and you're very um historically correct in um on these issues so <laughs> I thought the show was, um, I've been um, edging up to this for a few weeks now with little film clips of, of Africa Town and whatever. And if people are interested in Africa Town, they can, um, they have a website and um, you can, uh, their association or organization, you're free to look them up and ask some questions. Do any of them speak the language? Uh, so on and so forth, you know, and we will schedule a part two. Um, my family is about to have dinner now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, <me> too. <laughs> um, yeah, and you too. So, to um, uh, Donna says, All right, I got your back. My husband's family are connected to the Dene Navajo, what they call their language. It will be interesting. To do some research on the symbols. Oh, is that tell her what, Yes, Donna. Tell her oh, what symbol hey, it is. Tell her again the symbol. Yeah, the Naja. Yes, the Naja. N A J A. You know, that's the crescent moon. So uh <laughs> JP wrote, enjoy your dinner. Yeah, so thanks, we're man. we're gonna um a uh, fierce truth seeker will be expanding uh, more spirituality uh, included in the teachings. Me as well. Uh, we're metaphysicians and we do a merit of different things, history and spirituality, science and so on and so forth. And um, we'll be including in some of the shows uh, these issues and lifestyles as well. So I thank you, Fierce Truth Seeker. Oh, you're quite uh, I thank you, audience, for being patient. And um, Fierce, we'll talk backstage. And uh, we'll probably be doing some uh, maybe crystal healings and little notes on um, Reiki energy and... Um, different things like that for your enjoyment, your healing. And uh, of course the history, uh, we'll definitely be doing a part two. And thank you guys for encouraging a part two. Mm -hmm. I love you all. Uh, this is Fiber Gray Wolf, Native Voices, Turtle Island TV. Thank you so much for your time. We're going to put it together, what we're going to do for part two. Uh, Spencer Wells is a, a big issue. Uh, Fierce Truth Seeker wants to speak on uh, that as well. Um, YouTube um, said, clip, clip. And there went the video. 
<laughs> you know, I usually put, um, I don't own any of this. It's for teaching or, or whatever. But. Yeah, if they say you have to put for fair <laughs> use for educational purposes. Yeah, only. I didn't yeah. get a chance to do it. Um, I'm mm. dealing with family. <laughs> Yeah. As well, I have a, a little fifteen old month grandson. <laughs> and 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 to just as a disclaimer before we close, I just wanted to say that you know you may have people who may not disagree with, I mean, who may not agree with the information presented today. However, I have the charge of putting out responsible research and not going to any extremes. You know, I, I keep an objective position when I do research. So I'm not trying to sway anybody to believe a particular way. I just put out mm -mm. academically sound information that can be verified. And that's the position that I come from. So, you know, I yeah. know we will not agree, but you know, I, it, that's my charge to be academically honest. Right. And I hope in the future you can get something out of the spirituality as well um, for your daily life. I like to do uh, have some um, things with Pierce on that. Um, and um, I hope you enjoy it and you can apply it to your everyday life and you can learn something as well. Um, Celestial Moni. Monique said, wonderful coverage. Thanks. Uh, You're welcome. And thank you, Wado, uh, Nikido. Uh, peace and blessings to everyone. And good night. Fiber, Grey Wolf, Native Voices, Turtle Island TV. Ski. All right. Gagayui, I love you. Okinali, friend. Don't the dog, honey. Don't the dog, honey. <laughs>